Situated on a sprawling, tree-lined 11-acre lot in Pomfret, Connecticut, welcome to 60 Payne Road. Welcome everyone. Um, 60 Payne Road, Pomfret, Connecticut is a property listed for sale for $540,000. It's described as a Swedish Cope scribe fit log home with additional 2,000 square feet unfinished space on the second floor. Home offers system 3000 radiant heat, central air, clawfoot tub, culture stone fireplace, sunken living room, sub-zero refrigerator, two 330-gallon oil tanks in the basement. Home sits off the road with 11 acres of land. Uh, I'm here to warn all potential buyers of the many issues that I found with this home. At first glance, it looks like a home with very minor issues, just needs a little tender loving care, and it could be a beautiful home, which is what I thought. However, there are a plethora of issues with this house that have not been disclosed. Um, I received the disclosures paper, papers from the owner and the realtor, uh, the seller's agent, and none of the issues that I discovered were disclosed to me in the disclosures. Some were disclosed verbally when I went to go look at the home, um, but many were not. And I'm here to just warn potential buyers I could save you a lot of time and a lot of money um, by by watching this video. So what are some of the issues? Well, let's start with the exterior. Uh, as you can see from the photos, the logs are not maintained and uh, log, log homes need to be maintained continuously every five to seven years. Uh, and this obviously was not. Uh, the, the logs are weathered, faded, and they need to be either blasted or pressure washed and restained and you know that's minor um, but it starts to go much deeper uh, the roof uh, needs complete replacement there's been many roof leaks and, and there's evidence of that uh, as noted in my home inspection the plywood underneath the roof there are many wet spots most likely there's going to probably I would say most uh, you know if not all of the the decking under the asphalt shingle needs to be replaced um, but again I'm not a contractor this is just what what was noted on my home inspection so uh, continuing on the outside the roof soffits are completely unfinished there's electrical wiring not to code it's not suitable for exterior use uh, the home is not weather tight and uh, yeah, the, the, there's really not much more to say about the outside. The outside needs to be completely overhauled. On the inside, the first floor is not without its issues as well. Uh, the first floor, um, as you go into the home, there's a front porch. Uh, there's, uh, it's, the, it needs to be regraded. Uh, the, the front steps, as you saw there, are uh, they don't have proper railings. Um, there are some structural components to the front porch that need to be addressed. Uh, the inside of the home, which looks beautiful and does have beautiful logs, uh, has some water damage. The AC units you see there are not working, uh, or they weren't working uh, back in June, as stated on a previous home inspection from an, a previous buyer. However, uh, when I was there, they were un unable to be tested because it was too cold. So I don't know if that's been repaired, but they are at the end of their lifespan. They're over 20 years old, so plan on a new uh, AC system. Um, you go into the kitchen. Uh, it's missing kitchen cabinets, which I was told were custom made and the owner never finished them. So you'll have some money there. There's a little vegetable sink in the kitchen that is not hooked up. Uh, there's a burner in the cooktop that's out, um, and that's... The appliances are also nearing the end of their life uh, so just take that into account um, the there's one bedroom uh, one bathroom on the first floor and uh, there's another room that's like a den that's being used as a bedroom but it's not a true bedroom uh, a previous home inspection report notes that there's some water damage going out the slider to the uh, outdoor deck which uh, I should mention needs a complete replacement as well. That deck is completely rotted. So heading up to the second floor, which was one of, you know, uh, honestly a highlight for me. It's 2,000 square feet of unfinished living space. Uh, but at first glance, it looks like all the rough plumbing, all the rough electricals in, and just that the upstairs needs some insulation, sheetrock, and flooring. And obviously put in some bathroom fixtures and you'll have a beautiful 2,000 square feet. 
Um, actually, before moving up to the second floor, I should mention all of the first floor bath, which has the clawfoot tub, is the only shower, uh, obviously it's the only bathroom in the house uh, that's finished, so obviously that's where one would shower, and the shower was also not working. Uh, so the, the the tub diverter was not working, there was a, a missing handle on the cold um, valve was missing. So some issues with the bath bathroom on the first floor. Uh, again, going back up to the second floor, uh, the home inspection revealed that some electrical worked, some didn't. It was not to code. Um, we couldn't verify the heating system. The heating system was off, uh, so we didn't were unable to verify the AC and the heating system. Um, but the the oil the oil tank uh, in the basement, along with the oil burner, uh, is at the end of its lifespan. It's over 20 years old. And uh, home inspection notes that the two 330 gallon oil tanks were rusted. So there's moisture problems in the basement um, and some evidence of water leaks as well. Um, so again, heading back upstairs, it's completely unfinished. Um, there's no insulation. There's some evidence of water in the attic. Um, so in a nutshell, this house has water issues. The exterior is not weather tight. The major mechanical systems all need to be replaced either immediately or within the near future as that they are at the end of their lifespan. Um, going into the garage, which is a big issue. The garage is not fireproof rated. Uh, there's no insulation. There's no sheetrock in the ceiling, which has living space above. By code, you need to have a fire rated ceiling between the garage and living space. Uh, also in the garage, there are no supports there are no columns lolly columns um, there's no evidence that the garage has a footing in order to install these columns to help hold the weight of the room above um, a, a, a research a property search through the town revealed no documents no plans um, nothing basically nothing on the house with the exception of a roof permit that was taken out in 2016 no certificate of occupancy no uh, inspection reports to verify that what was built is what was intended. Um, so no original plans, which I find extremely odd for a house built in uh, 1995. Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago, and the town should record keeping should be much better uh, than what it is. So I don't know what's going over there on over there at the town, but I find it uh, very. Uh, suspicious that there is no record of this house being built. I don't know who the builder is. Uh, the the owner, who is the current owner, has been living in the house and has owned it for the past 20 years. He does not have plans. He couldn't tell me who the builder was. He bought it as a, uh, basically a shell, or so that was what was told to me. Um, again, I just want to reiterate, buyer beware. If the many issues that are wrong with this house are not addressed, um, just run. Run the other way. And uh, I find it come very disingenuous and on the verge of illegal to not disclose the many, many issues uh, with this house to potential buyers. Potential buyers are spending a lot of time uh, visiting the home, a lot of money, going through home inspections. This home has been under contract numerous times. And as you could see from the property history, you could do your own research. You'll see that this thing, uh, many of sale has fallen through and you could just add me to the list. Uh, it, which is very disappointing because it's, it is it had the potential to be a very, very beautiful home. But it was just sad that it was so neglected. Um, what else? Uh, going, just as a side note. Uh, that's not the end of the story with this house. If, if the many issues uh, that it has weren't enough, um, I, I feel the need to talk about its prior history. So as I mentioned, the house was built in 1995. However, uh, it wasn't completed. And it's still not entirely completed, but it wasn't completely built, I believe, until 1999. Um, there is an article... Uh, that you could search online I'll, I'll link in the description below uh, where there was a murder-suicide in 1999 at this house the original uh, owner of the home who, who was building the house was murdered by a contractor uh, and again I'll let you um, 
do your own research you can read the article and for many people that'll be a deal deal breaker uh, for some it won't uh, it is 20 years ago so uh, you know that's up to you that's up to you how much that affects you for me it was a little surprising um, I know in Connecticut you're not legally obligated as a realtor is not legally obligated to disclose that information especially uh, so long ago so they're not legally obligated to do it ethically I think it would be nice to know uh, but I understand they're also trying to sell a house so it's not something you would like to bring up so uh, I did my own research and I came across the article and uh, which I'll put up here briefly um, but again like I said I'll, I'll link it in the description below so that's 60 Payne Road and uh, it's been on the market for a while and it's been under contract numerous times and if uh, if you're wondering why like I was um, you'll start to dig deeper into this house and you'll start to do your due diligence here's that article that I was me uh, mentioned two found shot dead uh, and the gentleman is M Michael Anthony Ramos and he's he's the gentleman that um, was uh, shot dead uh, by his contractor who then killed himself uh, in 1999 so you could read that article um, but hopefully you won't you know if anybody who's a potential buyer of this house sees this video uh, this will save you a lot of time effort I've already been to the town I've already visited the home numerous times I've already had a home inspection I've already did done my due diligence uh, looked up the articles and and this is the unfortunate baggage that this house comes with and I do find it completely uh, disingenuous for, again that the owner and seller agent uh, don't disclose all these issues to a potential buyer forcing them to go on and find these issues themselves spending lots of time and money so if this video has helped you um, great leave a like leave a comment and uh, hopefully you can avoid a, uh, a horrible purchase. Take care.